Hey, hey everyone, it's Austin or Red's 3D Printing here. So today I am racing and comparing the quality between Creality's current flagship printers, the Core XY Kinematic K1C to their top of the line Ender 3 V3 Core XZ style 3D printer. For that, I prepared a few models and instead of making you guys sit through long, drawn out, boring videos, I threw them into time lapse and we'll be looking at those. So I've been anxiously waiting to do this right between my two printers mainly because of how many similarities they have this is not my review either of the printers this is just my opinion on the quality of the end result print before doing any sort of major calibration on the printer so after this I plan on modifying and calibrating the printers I currently have nearly 12 days of print time on my Ender 3 V3 and nearly a week of print time on my K1C I plan on doing an actual review of both of these printers soon now that I have a respectable amount of time on these printers so keep an eye out for that and I I will give you my good honest opinion on which printer I think is better worth it and why at the end of this video. You did hear that right though, I haven't done any sort of calibration on these two printers myself, the bed tramming happens automatically on both of these printers and with the most recent update, the K1C, the bed has been more level than ever. The V3's first layer bed issues were corrected within the first two weeks of the printer being released and I've never really had any first layer adhesion issues or really any any adhesion layer issues at all with the V3. All I did when I got these printers was I set them up just like any regular printer and did the automatic calibrations and loaded up some filament. The models you will see all have the exact same print settings yet some take longer on the K1C than the V3. So I think this is just one example of how the printers are very similar yet very different. I have found that the K1C has its benefits over the Ender 3 and vice versa. One of those things the K1C benefits is an enclosure. This alone I believe helps improve the quality of prints and allows for a wider range of filaments to be used. Personally I was excited to get my K1C because of this. And it's also my first enclosed printer. I had my Ender 3 V3 for at least a month and a half before acquiring my K1C and during that time there was one particular model that I simply could not print successfully on in open air printer like the typical unenclosed bed slinger. This particular model was Fab 365's Bush Viper Snake. With its many overhanging scales, I was unable to get a clean, consistent extruding layer without curling occurring. This was happening because of the cold North Dakota weather, which is out of my control. So before showing off the models I decided to print out, I should tell you exactly what we're looking for in a quality 3D print. A smooth and detailed surface finish is often highly desirable. Any visible layer lines or rough textures can detract from the overall quality. To give a good example of this, I chose to print a red-eyed skink and silk PLA filament. This is a tri-extrusion filament, so any sort of defects will be easily noticeable. Accuracy and precision is a very important detail. Precision refers to the dimensional accuracy of a printed object. I have prepared a hinged calibration cube, and I have the calipers ready at will. Strong layer adhesion is crucial for ensuring the structural integrity of a print. Poor layer adhesion can result in weak points or delamination, especially in functional parts. For this, I chose to print the popular slug model. 9 out of 10 times this print will simply fail due to poor layer adhesion. The K1C and the V3 set a good example of what good layer adhesion straight out of the box looks like. We will be evaluating how well the printer handles overhangs and bridges without the need for supports. For this, I chose the ever so loved 3D Benchy. The Benchy will help us evaluate, test, and benchmark the quality, hence the name Benchy. Consistent material flow and extrusion throughout the print job are very important. Inconsistent extrusion can lead to unwanted defects and my very least favorite thing, Z-banding. Overall, I feel the ideal 3D print showcases a balance of these factors to achieve a high quality, visually appealing, and functional result. Let's review the quality of these prints now. Did about the same time, 18 minutes 40 seconds, that's glorious. Okay, so the very first model we'll start off with is the Tri-Extrusion Red-Eyed Skink off of the K1C. Now you can see that the scales on this model are nice and sharp up top. The surface finish and extrusion is nice and consistent. 
This is a good example of what good surface finish looks like on a print. And then we have the print from the Ender 3 B3. It turned out very clean. The overhang on the V3 is not as clean as on the K1C, but I think that is due to part cooling. Other than the overhang, I think that the V3, the scales or the spikes are not as sharp on the model. Otherwise, they are very similar. Other than the sharpness of the spikes and the overhang, they are quite similar in quality. But I would say the K1C won in quality, but the V3 obviously won in speed on this one. As you can see in the time lapse that the V3 had stopped much sooner than the K1C did. So the K1C obviously had a little bit more time to print the model, but all of the print settings were the exact same. But let's move on to the next model. We're going to dive deep into the world of 3D Benchies. This one was done on the Ender 3 V3. The extrusion up front looks really, really nice. This is the updated V3 Benchy. I know that Creality just recently sent a new Benchy file to the Ender 3 V3. The overhang is one thing that could use improvement. And we do see a little bit of inconsistent extrusion up top on the surface. So that is the Ender 3, and the K1C is a very impressive Benchy. This is a Benchy that I think anyone would be proud of. The front up here gets really good part cooling due to the chamber fan. All of the overhangs look really great on this. We're going to look at the layers a little bit. The extrusion looks really nice. The surface finish is really clean. The layer adhesion has been great on these prints. We haven't had any inconsistent uh, layer adhesion. We do have a little bit of under extrusion right there is what it looks like. Now let's move on to our calibration cubes, our hinged calibration cubes. So on the Ender 3 model, I'm not as impressed on this one. It looks as if there is like banding. Uh, a, it, I think it might be a speed thing. I think it's because of how quick we were printing. The Y doesn't look very clean. The overhang on the Y. Otherwise, it isn't too horrible. Uh, inconsistent extrusion up top again. A tiny bit on the bottom, and the hinge works. We'll pull out our calipers and measure the cube. So the x-axis is 20.1 millimeters. The y measures at 20.1 oh, 20.1 millimeters, and the z measures at. 20 millimeters exactly so the measurements on the ender 3 are pretty on point I think we could adjust the flow a tiny bit the K1C now let's look at this it's looking pretty clean our Y overhangs a lot cleaner than on the ender 3 the X overhang isn't too bad Do we have we have nice uh, consistent extrusion up top no under extrusion like on the Ender 3, it opens and closes nicely, but I hear we're clicking on something. I'm not sure where, but let's measure this. So, 0, let's measure the X, 20.2, the Y, 20, 20.1, and the Z. 20. So maybe a tiny bit of over extrusion on the X axis, but everything's looking pretty nice with the calibration cubes. I'd say the K1C obviously wins in quality again, and the Ender 3 V3 wins in speed. Next, let's move on to our slug model. So 
I've printed this model many different times on many different printers and I haven't had great success 90% of the time. It'll fail simply due to layer adhesion issues, so the Ender 3 V3 and the K1C were great examples of good strong first layer adhesion. Now the green one was printed on the Ender 3 V3. I think it's kind of easy to tell because of uh, the rough overhang part on the front. Other than that, everything on this slug looks really good. There's a little bit of overhang drooping on the front tentacles or the front feelers. Otherwise, the top looks nice and consistent in the extrusion and it's nice and wiggly. So now we'll look at the K1C model. So as you can see with the K1C model I ran out of the filament that I was using so we had to swap to different filament. That just means we get a little wider variety of testing. <laughs> so the K1C did a beautiful job with this model. I don't really have any complaints. When I had to swap the model there was a tiny bit of inconsistent extrusion up top here. And I'm not exactly sure if that's due to a temperature fluctuation in the filament or something, but both of these models turned out great. These are the models that I've printed before on my Ender 3 V3, V1 Neo with the belted Z. They just do not turn out as great. This one uh, did not stay adhered to the bed, so it had popped off and then this one has really bad consistency issues and I've never been able to successfully print these front tentacles before printing this slug model on the VV3 and the K1Cs. I believe that concludes our testing. Now that is what I would call some impressive out of the box quality. You may have noticed that the Ender 3 V3 is a tad bit quicker than the K1C. I believe that is due to the Core XC kinematic system. This system allows for coordinated and swift X and Z movement. The X and Z axis of the Ender 3 V3 are rigged together allowing for two high torque motors to work in unison for a quick response in the blink of an eye. But don't let that turn you away from the popular Core XY K1C. The Core XY K1C is a popular and highly customizable and sought after 3D printer. I believe the speed is turned down on the K1C just the tiniest bit and with that comes slightly improved quality. Comparing the K1C and the V3, they both have the exact same bed size and very similar tool heads. The V3 has a second fan on the tool head where the K1C has a chamber cooling fan. While this puts more weight on the tool head, it really does not make a huge difference with the belted core XC style system because the X axis already has reduced weight without the need for an X motor on the gantry, as well as the Z needing to support the weight of a Z rod. With the Ender 3 V3 fan on the tool head, there is cooling on both sides of the print. On the K1C, it is just cooled on one side, so for that reason I believe they have the speed set quicker on the V3. The speed difference is noticeable in the slicer and then really only noticeable on direct comparison. Unless you erase the printers exactly like I did, I started them at the exact same time with the exact same print settings. These printers are really not very far off from each other. The K1C can print a wider range of filaments due to having an enclosure but the bed temperature is limited to 100 degrees. The Ender 3 V3 bed temperature is limited to 120 degrees. I do not know why Creality put this limit on the K1C. I actually went out of my way and reached out to Creality to ask if I can go in the printer's config file and turn the max bed temperature up to 120 degrees on the K1C. The response I got was that I can, but by doing so, I will get an error with the internal camera and I will not be able to view it during printing. So that is just one downside. You can pick up an Ender 3 V3 today for about $400 to $420. As for the K1C, you can get one of those ordered today for about $550 to $575. So about a $150 price difference between the two. Do you think this price difference is worth it for the added enclosure? Let me know your thoughts down below. So before I get to my opinion, I would just like to say that both of these printers showcase impressive capabilities. For instance, Fab 365 
Archive estimates about 8 hours of print time for their bender from Futurama model. Meanwhile, Creality's Core XC Ender 3 V3 can complete the same model in just 2 hours and 15 minutes. It's truly remarkable to be able to witness efficiency and speed of these cutting edge printers in person like this. So personally with the announcements of Creality's new K2 Plus and Ender 3 V3 Plus models, I'm more thrilled than ever, but I'm also more thrilled than ever with the announcement of the new CFS system. So with that system, they say that we're going to be able to use it on the current V3 and K series printers. So that's great news for all Ender 3 V3 and Reality K1, K1 Max, and K1C owners. I would just like to shout out all of you guys for hanging on tight because I think everyone had high hopes that Creality was going to do this for us. And a big shout out and thank you to Creality and a happy 10 year anniversary by the way. Personally, I'd have no issue buying either of these printers, but... I really have a passionate love for the Core XZ kinematic style system. There's really no other printer on the market like this other than the one that you can build yourself, the Voron switch wire. So unless you have the skills to be able to build a printer yourself and source parts and all of that mumbo jumbo, your best bet in getting a Core XZ style 3D printer would be buying the Ender 3 V3 or the Ender 3 V3 Plus from Creality now. That is just one of the many reasons why the V3 is my favorite printer and why I would also suggest that printer any day and all day every day for everyone anyone it's a great startup printer and also a great intermediate printer for anyone that's been printing for quite a while already so if you're skeptical at all on buying the ender 3 v3 or the k1c or k series printers at all don't be you will be able to print in color hopefully sometime after july 31st so i am super happy with the printers that i have right now because at the end of the year i'm gonna have three printers that can print in full multicolor, and that's awesome to be able to say. I'd just like to thank you guys for joining me on this journey through racing my K1C and Core XZ Ender 3 V3. I hope you guys found this video insightful and informative in some way. If you have any questions or would like to share your experience with your 3D printer, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that like button so I kind of get an idea on if you guys like this sort of content, and subscribe to my channel. Your support really means the world to me and helps me continue creating valuable content for the 3D printing community. Remember, the possibilities with 3D printing are endless, so keep on creating, innovating, and exploring the new horizons. Until next time, happy 3D printing.